So it's, it's not the company a lot of the way. So the hack around that is possibly trying to find a company that uh that is self-insured. Okay. A lot of some companies are self-insured. So what I would say is, um, I don't know if you got a JB Hunt. Uh, I don't know the policy on JB Hunt, but if I'm not mistaken, I think they self-insured. They may be. I know CR England is, but no one wants to go there. Nobody wants to go to CR England. It's like going to jail in Mexico. Nobody wants to go to CR England. So uh, you might have to deal, you might, it, it's all about research. I tell people this all the time. It's all about research. Uh, CSQT? You mean CSRT? Hold on, crash and roll stunt dummies. Stunt team, crash and roll stuff. Yeah, it's CRST. Like Christ, CRST. If that's who, you, are you talking about CRST or what is CSQT? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. 
So you would have to, it, are you talking about CRST? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but Christine, it's all about your research, baby. Take some time, take an hour out your day. Sit, turn the TV off, grab you a list of trucking companies, write the name down and call them. And ask them about their policies. Ask them about their requirements to drive for them. That's the only way. Go to some of these websites. They will tell you. Now, the thing about the six-month mark, a lot of places won't take it. That's totally true. It's over here. That's totally true. Um, a lot of places won't take it. But... It is some places that will take you, but some of them won't pay you fairly. You won't make good money, but it is some that will. Now, one of the places, some of the places that you can go is the small mom and pop shops. They deal with, uh, they find these little rinky dink insurance companies that will insure them, and you can work with them, and some of them will pay you decently. But some of those guys take anybody and they have a lot of points on that DOT number, which means that you may get harassed. That may be the other side of it. So it's all about the research process. Let me see. Uh, what do you think about authority with Amazon? Uh, I'm not familiar with Amazon. I never really dealt with them before, uh, so I don't want to lie to you. But anytime you got your own authority, make sure the money makes sense. See what rates are going with these companies that they paying out drivers. If you got your own authority, you need to make more than a person that signed on to a company is making. You need to make good money with your authority because you're going to have more expenses. And you're going to have more legwork unless you pay somebody to do it. Which means that that's more expenses. Sandra Herrera says, hello peeps. As a small fleet owner, is the tip agency a good place to find drivers? Oh, yes. Yeah, listen. When you're dealing with any agency, when you're dealing with anybody, you need to tell them what to scream for. Hustle, the trucker, what's shaking, bro, what's popping. Uh, whenever you're dealing with anybody, you just need to be firm, step by your convictions, and tell them what you're looking for in a driver. Tell them that. And you know what? Um, I think that that may be a good outlet, a tip service. But you know, with the tip service, you're gonna pay them a chunk of what you're paying out the company. So. Thank, that's what's up. Thank you for answering my questions. Love, love, yeah. Love you too, baby. Love you too, Christina, uh, little. Do you know any companies paying 60 cents per mile and what's your thoughts on 1099? My thoughts on 1099 is it's great. It's ups and downs on it. It's no taxes, which means you get your money up front. Uh, if you get a creative accountant, you can write off a lot of stuff, but it puts you in a terrible position when you're going to try to buy a house or something if you write off everything. Uh, if you got a 1099 and you writing off a lot of stuff, let's just say you made $60,000 and you write off so many different great things and you don't pay taxes on it and you say, oh we, I want to go and I want to buy me a house. When you go to that mortgage company, they're going to tell you like, oh uh, man, you only made $8,000 last year. Uh, we cannot finance you because you don't make much. So it puts you in a it puts you in a terrible place. But you get your money up front, you can write it off, and you can save cash. So you know, like if you can hold on to it, you know, it's what it is. Brandon Moore hooked me up with a job. Hustle, what's good, bro? Thank you for answering my questions. Like nobody has any more questions for me. I'm telling you, better take advantage of it. I don't do Q and A a lot. But I got to show love to YouTube, so I'm definitely going to be doing some. I'm going to try to do some Q&A. Because now I actually have a mentoring program where I help people out. 
So the program is great. I've been getting a lot of people signing up. I just got another six month down so bow. Another six month mentorship so uh, it's great, man. I'm loving it. I'm definitely, definitely loving this. Uh, people are calling more and they're asking, hey, I want a six month mentorship program. I want to be a part of it. I'm like, oh, that's great. I'm loving that. That's beautiful. I'm loving to see it. People are taking their careers a lot more serious. Now, before I start advertising and promoting, I would like for you guys to ask more questions. I know y'all got questions to ask and I've been answering each one of them. Um, another thing is, all right, uh, moving on. Another trick. Can I buy a truck using business credit? That depends on your research and where you go. A lot of places are changing the rules like Freightliner and Volvo and all the big dogs. They used to have it where you could possibly use your business credit and you could buy a truck. But now, if you are using business credit. Okay, thank you, Hustle the Trucker. Uh, if you are using business credit, what a lot of places are doing now, some of them, not all, is they're saying that they need to see $2 million worth of revenue earned for the company before they take you on and take you seriously as a business flat out without your social. So a lot of places like the big dogs will make you use your social security number, which means that you will have to back your business with your social. So with that being said, yes, it may be a little more difficult to find a place that will sell you a truck with business credit only. Salute bro, been thinking about getting into the trucking, but I have no clue where to start, why be? Uh, you need to start by getting a mentorship and a business credit course. And listen, let me, let me tell you about the starter pack. For all the people out here that's starting out in this trucking industry, for all the people that's thinking about starting out, uh, I was actually talking to a customer yesterday. I swear to God, I cannot make this up. See if I can change that. Can I make this up? I was talking to a customer yesterday. They say, Tune, I'm a company driver and I, uh, I don't know where to start. I said, look, get the business course that's going to help you structure your business. Get the business. This, this, this was, matter of fact, this conversation was before yesterday. Matter of fact, I, 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 let, me, let me rephrase. That's not how it went. I was trying to figure out how it started, but that's not how it started. This customer actually, I did a setup for them. I set their business up for them, okay? And they was like, do you think it's crazy for me to be doing this, to be setting everything up, and I don't even, I'm still a company driver. I said, it's the smartest thing in the world to do. He said, Tune, are you blowing smoke because you're making money? Or are you serious? I say, okay, let me explain it to you. So I told him an instance, he was like, now I got my business set up and I'm still a company driver. What should I like? Why is that good? So I told him what happened to me. This was my story. I was with CR England when I was bought this truck right here. I bought this truck from CR England a while back. And I put my name on it. They was like, uh, what, what do you want on a lease? I said, put my name, baby. Put my name on the lease because it's my truck. So to make a long story short, when I learned about business, I learned that I need to put all my assets for the business under the business, right? So I did that. When I went to change the title over, I had to pay tax on selling the truck to my business, which I've already paid tax when I bought the truck. So I got taxed on the same truck twice. So with that being said, about him doing everything in his business before he goes and does anything, he's already set to put everything under his business. His business is already established and actually gaining time behind Dunn's number and that EIN number, which says that he's in business, he's been in business for a while, which gives him the leg up on a lot of us who did it backwards. You see what I'm saying? So 
After I explained that to him, he's like, you know what? That makes sense. I can't dispute that. I can't deny it. So it makes sense. Somebody, asked me, any power unit only gigs you might recommend to start off. With. Um, like I said before, it's all about the research. It's companies like I think Pam P A M. If I'm not mistaken, I ran into a guy. He was with Pam, and they offered him about, he run loads for him for the week, and they will gross him 5000 That's okay. You know, uh, am I doing consulting now? Yes, I am doing consulting. It's called the mentorship program. I got a three-month, a six-month, and a year. Definitely. I got a three month, a six month, and a year. You can call me at 1-855-YBE-TV-49. That is 855-YBE-TV-49. Uh, like, okay, power only. You need to look that up. Google, do your research, see what they're offering. If you got a power only and you got your authority, you have to do the research. Now, if you want the re me to do the research for you, you would have to get a mentorship and we can do the research together. But otherwise, I can't do the research for you, bro. Can't do the research. You gotta do the research. You gotta call some of these companies. Hey, do you got power only? I think JB Hunt has power only. Um, there's a lot of companies that do power only, but just make sure it makes sense. Make sure it makes sense. How do you feel about low boards like Uber Freight and JB Hunt 360? From what I've seen and from what I've heard, I think they're trash. I think they're they're giving out garbage loads. When you got a company that has a lot of company drivers and uh, they got a low board, a lot of times they give away garbage freight. Like uh, from my understanding, CH Robinson is horrible. Uh, JB Hunt, they take so much off the top and they give you trash loads. Uh, CR England, from my understand, like I think you should go to like that low board, one, two, three low board. Uh, there's different low boards out here that you need to check out and see what's to it. If you want more information on that, I can help you research it. If you get the mentorship, I can't do all the research for everybody, sorry. Those my areas but if you want me to help you research it and find it out one two three low boy yeah my understanding is they got some good freight on that i could give you what i know but if i gotta research you gotta get your mentorship baby uh freight jb hunt 360 consulting now how much is the mentorship all right the three month mentorship is 89.99 times three out of 92 it's like 267 for three months for six months is like $499.97 or something like 500 bucks and a year is a thousand bucks and you get access to me for one hour per month you run through that time pretty quickly so definitely structure your questions but for the most part I haven't been having any problems people call me all the time they ask me questions hey tune this, this, and this. Hey, Tune, what's up with this? Can we do this? Can we do this? And I actually do three-way calls with them. I try to be real lenient and try to help people out as possible can so they can see how to handle a lot of these situations. I haven't had any complaints. Everybody who's done it, they love it so far. They love it. They tune. Hey, man, I'm about to burn out five, man. Like, let me call you. I just write it down. Hey, took five minutes, blah, blah, blah. They ask me questions all the time, and I think it's pretty dope. I love it, and honestly, like it's great. I want you to see my eyes when I say this. I lost a lot of money not having nobody to call. And, and some of some of them been wanting to know questions. It's been dope to try to research things or have me do a lot of work and we're doing it together successful like no 
long as you not calling me like, look, I want to get six trucks in three days. All right, well, uh, do you got any drivers set up? No. Do you got any companies scouted? No. So, like, do you want me to walk on water for you, basically? Show you how the industry What's my first steps? They say, I want to get my business to be doing this, and I'm trying to find more drivers, and I show them how to do that. Or they trying to find companies, or they're buying a truck, or they're, they're like, they trying to find out, like, hey, Tune, I got this situation coming up. I just called a ticket, what can I do? Like, they asking just general questions like you guys asking, and they want to have somebody that they can ask this guy the expertise. They call me and I help them out, and over time, man, we start solving these problems, and things go a lot smoother. So, for the most part, it's pretty dope. Yes, I drive. HT legit. Hey, HT, I'm gonna call you later, bro. Uh, uh, I'm doing a, I'm doing a seminar in uh in South Carolina, man. And uh, you a big dog out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Ghost, he a big dog. You know, I consider myself a big dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big dog. You a big dog. I could definitely try to get you on a ticket. Uh, to see if you want to speak or something, man. I'm gonna reach you up, reach out to you, man, Chris. I'm gonna reach out to you, bro. I definitely would love for you to come out, bro, and uh, do your thing, man. I'm gonna reach out to a couple the Asian Mind Show. I'm gonna reach out, man. I would love to definitely have you in the building, bro, because I know you got some good information, bro. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Let me try to get out of Chris. Okay, what do you think about local dump truck and tandem trucks? I don't know. I'm a semi-truck driver. I don't know a lot about dump trucks. Can a day cab driver make big money? Yes! Yes! Only thing about a day, with a day is a day cab on the side of me, right? When it comes to day cabs, you pretty much not going to be able to go over the road unless you buy hotels, right? Because nobody want to sleep in a day cab because you can't sleep in it. So, you can be local like me. With, with a sleeper but and you can take that same sleeper over the road given the opportunity so it kind of a day camp can make you money but it makes you exclusively local unless you want to deal with hotels all the time when it's time to shut down you get a hotel room for your driver and that could be expensive so day camps are usually exclusive to local but you can make good money local i know a lot of guys that's making two three drive a day cab for that. But what I'm saying is, if you ever want to change, if you have okay credit, should you buy a car payment to build credit? No, you don't have to get a car. Like, you don't have to get a car. You can use credit cards to build credit. Uh, uh, you actually, is an app. I forgot the name of the app. I can look into it. Uh, it's an app where the bills you like rent, paying rent, you could pay the app to pay your rent for you early and they will report it to the credit bureau. It's an actual app that does that. It's a million different ways to build credit besides going to make an extremely large purchase. You don't have to buy a car to build credit. You can have three credit cards, small credit cards, charge them small, pay it back every month and you will be able to build credit. It is not, you do not have to do that. If you have okay credit, okay. One, two, three, low board. Do you think that government freight as an independent contractor would be a good start into the trucking business? If you can pull that off, sometimes the government freight do pay a lot. I've seen military freight pays really good money really really good money uh but it is very strict like uh one of the guidelines to military freight when i was uh, actually hauling it is you got to run teams 
uh, and someone has to be in the front seat guarding the load at all times. Okay, mentorship. You should start a brokerage company. I can't do everything, people. I already got a t-shirt business. I already got a mentorship business. I sell business courses. I'm a truck driver. I got five children. Like I, I can't, I can't add no more to my plate. Like I can't, I can't add no more to my plate. Uh, many people want fleets, but don't know how to find drivers. That should tell them they're not ready to own fleets. Actually, that should tell them that they need to think about marketing. Like, this is the thing. Everybody wants to be a successful driver, a successful fleet owner, and do all these things, but they don't want to take the steps. What's up with your branding? Well, I don't think I'm ready for that. But you want to have three to four trucks. Yeah. So you think you're going to not be able to brand? Like, if you're not branding, people are not going to take you seriously. Like, you gotta be able to brand. Like, for example, look at this. Oh, that's disgusting. I gotta watch this, but. This is my brand. Like, you have to go out and brand. You have to brand yourself, brand your company. Make people understand that you're serious about this. Get an 800 number. Get a real email address. Get a website. Get all of the things that you need to be a brand. You need to do that. Like, you have to do the marketing part. Listen, if you think you're going to be able to skip around and play, this industry is not for you. You got to take this serious. Like, this is your business. After I received my CDL loss, would it be good I did a sign on with the company? Yes, it's not, a, not an issue. Uh, if you say, look, after, like, that's why I do mentorship, okay? That's why I do mentorship, right? Explain this. Because a lot of people, right, they have personalized courses. They ask me a general question and I don't have absolutely no background on them. Like, if you say, two, should I sign on with a trucking company? I say, yeah. Come to find out, you want to sign on with an over-the-road trucking company. I, I find out the numbers that over-the-road is better for you. You won't make no money local, but you got three kids at home and you're a single parent. You're the only source of income, and I'll be like, I, that would be like by me saying this general answer, I don't know any background on you, so I can't give you a real life answer. I would have to know more about your personal life to give you an educated answer, an educated guess, so to speak. Like, I can't, like, you seem like, well, I got a daughter, she's diabetic. I had a driver, that daughter was diabetic. And he like, I need to be at home a lot. Should I sign on? Should I stay with CR England? No, you're not gonna make money. You could pop, unless you're gonna run containers, then you could make around this, like, 800, 1200 a week from my understanding what the England drivers are making. And you can be home, will that suffice? Well, I really wanna own my own truck. Well, it's looking like you will have to go to one of these companies right here. They got a decent lease program in this area that I know of. Or we would have to look up some, but you would probably end up with a company like, go to this leasing company right here, buy a truck, and you can go over to like J.B. Hunt. They don't charge that much, and you can still make about $1,500 a week. Put up money for the truck and pay your truck off in this much time. Good beans, right? Cool beans, right? You good. But I would have to know more about your personal life to answer questions like that. I'll look for the car. All right, cool. I'm out for now. Got some runs, some errands, but be safe out there, bro. And keep stacking up that money, bro. You already know. What's the best way to get on as a dispatcher for other drivers? Put yourself out there. You need to market yourself as a dispatcher. Call some of these companies. Do you have any experience? Or uh, call some companies, man. Get your experience up. Like, most likely when it comes to dispatching, I don't know exactly how the dispatcher game works. I've never been a dispatcher. I, I don't know any personal. I, I do know people. No, she wasn't a dispatcher. She worked in, like, uh, compliance and stuff. So I don't know any dispatchers. So I don't like to... Uh, to give out information that I'm not too familiar with. 
Is getting contracts with direct shippers difficult? From my understanding, it can be challenging. It can be challenging, but I'm not a, I'm not an expert on that. So don't give me the line. I'm not an expert. But my understanding, it can be challenging. So you see to walk into some of these places and ask them. Everybody is different. Some people might say, hey, you gotta have at least three trucks, three trailers, or five trucks, five trailers. Some people say, look, we just need you to have authority, this much experience, good to go. But sometimes you may not fall under those guidelines, so only thing you can do is go up there and ask, ask, when you in these places and you you buy your house or we get a contract, be like, oh, I wanted to uh, get, I got my own authority and I wanted to get a contract. I wanted to know what was the requirements. I actually did that before with a company named Snyder. And they told me, look, uh, we run like two loads back and forth per week. We pay $2 a mile per each load. You will run up to Memphis and come back. And you would do that twice a week. It's like a four day turnaround and we'll pay you straight out, blah, 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 this, that, this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's what they told me. I was like, is it like, they were like, no, we actually got the trailers that preloaded. So the only thing you need is your authority and the tractor. I was like, oh, okay, fine. Just like that. So some people will let you know what's up. Explain to me what the mentorship offers upon completion. It depends on the person. Like, let's just say you you start off and you want the mentorship. And you want to buy a truck. And I'm showing you everything you need to do before you buy that truck, right? Now you go out and you're purchasing that truck. And I'm showing you everything you need to do so you can buy that truck and limit yourself on uh, getting the limit. Okay, for example, for example, I swear to God, right? I swear to God on my grandma, right? It was a, it's a guy... I, was, I, I helped him with the oil sample thing, right? He went out and he was buying a truck. Now, when I helped him out with the oil sample thing, he went out and bought a truck. I'm trying to, I wanted to surprise y'all with this. I'm trying to get him to get the, uh, the, the, the printout of the oil sample, show a ridiculously high aluminum, borium and all that, and the, one of the heads or a gasket was about to blow. And they caught it in the oil sample. They basically told him, this truck is on the way to the junkyard before he bought it. He would not have potentially found those issues. So results may vary. It depends on what you're trying to do. So I was able to save this guy from buying a piece of junk, which potentially saved him thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. So if you're trying to buy a truck, I can help you with that. If you, It depends, like, it's not one result. It's not like I say, well, I mentor you on just tie, buying tires. I mentor you on uh, 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 what type of truck to buy. I mentor, like, I don't mentor you on that. I mentor you on whatever you call me for. Like, I'm trying to mentor so the results will vary. You try to find a company, I'll help you find a company that you can sign on them. With. You're trying to find drivers. I will show you how to find drivers and make yourself more presentable. I will show you different things. You say, too, I got the website. I got the application on my website. What is the next step? How about you do a white boy animation and run an ad in your area where you want to find drivers at? How do you do that? All right, this is the connect I use. This is where you can get this. This is where you can get that. Oh, wow. This is what I can do? Yes. So results may vary, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I'm not saying that you are automatically going to be a success. It depends if you're willing to work hard to do the things that you need to do. And if you're willing to do the leg work that I'm telling you to do. And if you actually use it, and you're not just sitting there talking to me about your girl. Yeah, man, my girlfriend, she put on some weight, man. It's great, like if you do that, of course the results are not gonna be as good as somebody who came with that question structure, ready to get that question answered and ready to put in the work. I love what you do, your positivity and your knowledge that you pass on, God bless, YBE, North Carolina. I appreciate it, Richard Seabrook. Pros and cons of leasing. All right, no problem, pros. You can write off the lease payment on your taxes instead of depreciate. You can write off the full lease payment. Pro, con, 
the least famous usually be ridiculously high because the person that's leasing to you, especially if it's a company, they have to make money off of it. <coughs> so, it makes your payment a lot higher. Bro, when you're going to buy a truck after the lease ends, if you go to a trucking company and you show them that you were successful with the lease with a ridiculously high payment, it works in your favor because if you're paying like with Prime, if you're paying $1,700 or $1,500 per week, per week for a truck, which rounds off to about $6,000 per month truck payment, and you still was taking home $1,800, $2,200 almost per week, and you go out to Freightliner and say, look, I got decent credit, I got 10 grand down, I want that new truck right there, the 2018, what are we trying to do? And, and I made money with paying out $6,000 per month with this company right here. They say we can give you a 2018, your payment will be $1,800 per month. That will take you down, oh, eight, 12, 16, 15, 15. About four four hundred fifty dollars a week. Let's just say two grand a month. That will you will save four thousand dollars. They know you can make the payment because of that. They say you know what you're less of a risk. That is a pro of leasing. Another okay con of leasing. A lot of these leasing places lock you in for a long period of time. Two three year lease. For you that is a walk away lease, but they have these little stupid stipulations and they will dupe you on them and try to ding your credit or even take you to court and try to come after you for breaking the lease another con of leasing a lot of these companies when you lease a truck they will uh, 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 wait and slow you down when you're getting close to buying it. or they will try their best to, to, uh, to have you waiting so you can quit or they try to get you to release or at the end of the lease, that's what I'm trying to think of. At the end of the lease, a lot of them will cheat you because you will have a maintenance account with them, you'll have an escrow account with them and it will be mandatory. You got about 10, 15 grand. They will look at small things like, it's a scratch on the steering wheel. We have to replace the whole steering wheel for $2,000 and they will eat up your money and steal it from you. A lot of companies will do that. Some will, some won't, but a lot of them will. So if that's some of the cons, but another pro is, you usually get newer equipment with a lease and a lot of time the company will keep you running and if you need to fix your truck, a lot of companies will help you fix your truck. If you are leasing a truck, they will help you fix their truck because they want you to continue to make that payment and pay them back. So it's in their best interest a lot of the way because they're making money off you two ways now. Those are some of the moderate uh, pros and cons of leasing. What is the best way to find a company that's looking for an owner operator to run local routes? Craigslist, Facebook, um, uh, if you got a rail yard, go up to a rail yard. Talk to the drivers coming in and out and ask me, hey, is that a good company? Talk to drivers at a truck stop near a rail yard. You see those containers? Hey, driver, driver, driver. Can I ask you a question? What? You're on the op? Yeah, I am. How you do over there? Well, I bring home about 2500 a week. Do you run hard? No, I'm home every night. I do about 2500 If I actually use my clock, I do about three grand. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. Okay, tell me more. Just give me the name of the company. There you go, there you go, some local companies. Look up local in your area on Craigslist. That's a great place to go. It's a great place to advertise and a great place to go. What do you prefer, dry or reefer? Depends on the rates, depends on the percentage. Uh, dry band is a lot easier to deal with. Reefer is a lot more sitting, usually. It's a lot more sitting and appointment based, but if you find a good percentage reefer company, you can make good money. You can make some money with that reefer. You can make some money with that reefer. Okay.
So I, I prefer reefer if it's paying well, if it's paying percentage, and they can keep you running. Like if you had a local reefer company that does dropping hooks and pay percentage and got good lines on freight, oh, you winning. You winning. 75, 80%, oh, 85%. Reefer, you get some money. Get some money. Are your courses mainly focused on how to buy, start a trucking business? Oh, uh, I started planning for my used car dealership, but I'm not sure where to start. Listen, my, my courses mainly focus on business. I, I advertise to truckers on this channel mostly because it's mostly truckers on this channel. But I've set up, I've used my setup and my courses. I've helped set up uh, car repair shops, a uh, credit repair service, a cleaning service, uh, a promotion company, a real estate company, Max Moolah LLC, that was the promotion, uh, Desiree Cleaning Co Services, that was the cleaning services. I forgot the, the car fixing company. I forgot, I think it was Credit Care, Care Credit, that was out of California. I helped set them up. Um, uh, that was a credit rebuilding place. A lot of, like, I did a bunch of trucking companies. Oh, a daycare. I did a daycare. I recently did a logo for a daycare. That was just a logo. Uh, oh, a lingerie company. I actually did a lingerie company. Uh, that one was still in progress. She was still looking for the text. I need to call her and see what's to it. Um, I did a body shop. They, did a, they do body work on cars. I did a body shop. Oh, a logistic company, a brokering company. So, like, no, it's not just for trucking. Um, like, let's just say for the for the company, for the the guy who's about to start selling cars. Number one, you probably don't need a physical address, so you won't need a virtual address. But you definitely need a business email, right? And let's just name the place of uh, 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 firework car sales. So you got firework car sales. You're gonna need an email address, right? What's the number again? 855-YBETV49 855-YBETV49 So let's just say you need you need an email address So let's just say the guy with the car place dealership It looks like his name is Sean Ooh, I overrailed the heck out of that So let's say your name is Sean Hampton Sean Hampton at X Firework carsales.com or fwkcarsales.com or whatever you know uh, so you need an email you need a phone number with a switchboard right I will help you set up the switchboard or show you how to set up the switchboard right so you set all those things up and you need to start getting business credit right for your vendors and get the duds number and things of that nature right that's on ads all your inventory Need to run an ad, tweak your ad every week, run a new ad in your ad area every week. What's that? The marks. So, would that just only help truckers? No, that would help any in the end. And honestly, my marketing course for a car dealership, oh my God. Oh my God, it would be so dope. And or the mentorship, oh my God, it'd be so dope. I swear to God, I did mentorship, but this one was free. It was on the house for my brother, right? My brother, he has a promotion company. So I taught him about how to run Facebook ads, right? So I taught him the basics. I helped him set up his business, and I taught him the basics, right? I swear to God. This dude is making $3,000 off all the parties. Each party he does, he like three grand off each party. All of my help alone. I'm like, bro, you need to run ad. He like, but that, why would I do? I'm like, because it's specific, bro. You can target a certain group of people. He like, what you mean? I'm like, okay, you're doing parties, right? You're promoting, you're party promoter, right? Yeah. I'm like, so for example, what would be a hot party for, for this weekend? He like, well, it's Sagittarius season. I'm like, okay, Sagittarius. You know you can actually target all Sagittariuses in this area, right? He like, for real, I'm like, that's a keyword. You put it in the search, Sagittarius, and you get to target them. He like, you lying. I'm like, I swear to God. I'm like, and then you use your new footage 
to run new ads. So after you do the Sagittarius party and you show all these beautiful women and the bottles and the champagne and how the party went up and all that, how crowded it was, how much fun they had, you use that same footage to run a new ad. He like, wait, this, this actually makes sense, bro. I'm like, bro, it should. So we kept talking. So he ran the ad, he called me and I helped him tweak it a little bit. And that was the first and last time I ever helped him. Now the dude is a freaking ad guru. He spends $500 on the ad and makes over three grand. Like, no, 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 he takes home over three, three grand. His party after advertisement, paying people to come out, all of this and all of that, he uses all of that in his ad and guess what? He will take, oh yeah, not, not to mention, he has a partner that he splits his profit with. So he will make $11,000 off one party. $11,000 off one party after he pays the talent, after he pays uh, the talent, after he pays for promotion, and splits with his partner. He still will take home $3,000, sometimes four or $5,000. So does that answer your question? And I can't make this up. And even if I did, it would be a good story. You know why? Because you'd be like, but even if you made that up, that's that's really true. You really can't do that. Anybody who knows a little bit about Facebook ads, you can't do that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can I sue my company for my maintenance grant that I accumulated during my lease? Nothing was garnished. They just refused to give me back my bread. They have 45 days to give you your money and a detailed statement. Now, don't take my word for it. You need to call OOIDA. Go on Google, type in OOIDA contact. Call them, ask for the compliance department. Tell them in detail what happened, how long it's been, and they will show you how to file a complaint against that company. Tell that company, to give you your money within 45 days or you're filing a complaint with the FFCMSA, the federal FMCSA, okay, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Association, the FMCSA, you're gonna file a complaint and get a lawyer involved and you will be able to sue and win if they don't release that money within the right amount of time. But they can't wait till the last day and release it. I've seen companies do it. And they, not, they gotta give you an itemized statement of what they took out and why they took it out. Now, the thing is, they're going to lie. If you had $5,000, they gonna say, hey, it was a scratch here. We had to replace the whole driving column. We had the tire work. We take this much off for the tires and they had this much missing. The tires were this. The rim shaft was that. The, this was this. And they're gonna send you a check for $485.62. So if you already turned in that truck and didn't take pictures of everything and be able to show that that truck, they're lying, it's your word against theirs. And nine out of 10, they go, well, we don't have that truck, it got turned in. Or that truck is with another driver, we fixed it back up and put it on the road. So what can you do? So with that being said, you kinda at their mercy, but Call the FM, call OOIDA. They have a compliance department that will help you in your journey. YBE, tell him. I'm helping. Okay, is there anybody else with any questions? Y'all need to ask. Now, y'all got me on this thing asking all these questions. Then y'all gonna be sending me email. Nobody's getting back to me because, like, I don't have time to do everything. So I try my best to give back because it's not about the money, that's why I do this. I do this and give away free information because it's not about the money to me. I love seeing or hearing from a driver that say, hey, two, I'm making over a hundred thousand dollars, man, and I gotta dedicate it to you. Man, hey, I appreciate it. I love to hear it, it warms my soul. Somebody just asked me something to see. Is there any issues doing a DBA in Texas if you have the LLC already established in New Mexico? To be yes, why would you do a doing business ass? Ass. That's like saying my nickname, Rico. 
So you telling me that as a business you want a nickname? I just want a nickname. Like, like call me Weezy F Baby. Are you married? No, I'm not married. I was engaged and we ended up breaking up. So I'm single then as a dollar bill. Very single. I hope there was a woman asking that. It looks like a man. Well, sir, I'm heterosexual, just to let you know I'm not gay. I have absolutely nothing against gay people. I'm just not one of them. So if you're asking to get married, no, I, I, I can't marry you, sir. I cannot marry you, sir. How much you need to buy a truck and start the business and start business? Okay, listen. Real deal, you making me laugh, man. You making me laugh. <laughs> It was a dude that was that was like a little I'm not gonna say weird but a little peculiar that a dude with a picture like this like is you married I just want to know what that got to do with a truck transmission you know what I'm saying like are you married sir just are you trying to like hook me up with with, with your sister or something Cause that's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know. Like what, I don't, do I give off that vibe? Like, sir, are you married? So what you're doing in, in August? Being with a woman? No, sir. I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking, man. I'm just picking at you. Hope you got a good sense of humor. But all jokes aside though, no, I'm not married and I'm not in the dudes. Sorry. Uh, let me see. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Are you married? How much you need to buy a truck and start the business? Number one, that's a trick question. Okay, how can I answer that question when it's this thing that starts with the letter V called a variable? Man, God, we won't tell what? What's the tell? Bro, look, if I was gay, listen, if I was gay, I've, I've told the truth about all types of things in my life. When I was young, I was violent. When I was young, I sold drugs. When I was young, I was in the street, I gang bang. Like, I have absolutely no, I have no problem being me. So if I was gay, I would be, like, I would be super gay, just you know what? Nigga, I'm not only gay, I'm super gay, but I'm not, it's just, I'm not gay. I got nothing against gay people. I have absolutely nothing against gay people, I'm just not one of them. Like, I don't see why people do that. Like, you know what, sidebar. I just think that that's so offensive that when you heterosexual, it's like you got to be on defense and on guard just to say you ain't something that you not. Like, I remember when genuine, like, I swear to God, like, the saddest thing is, I remember when the, the transvestites, right, they was trying to kiss on genuine, and he was like, no, don't do that. Then they just said, you homophobic. Like, dude, you cannot kiss on me. I would have stole on me. I would have punched him right in his Dude, get your lips back. Look, I swear to God, if you put your lips at me, I'm going to punch you. Like, dude, like, you know what I'm saying? And I would have been very disrespectful and very upset because you can't force me to partake of something that I'm not a part of. That's it. Like, like we can see, we can talk. Oh, you a tranny? Oh, you a tranny? Oh, oh that's cool. Fist bump to all the trannies. Bow. Fist bump. Living that trans life. Bam. You already know. You already know. Like when you when you play uh 007, you don't go no spy mission. You go on the trans mission. Bars, bars. Was that hot? Was that hot? Nah, you ain't like that. Was that? It wasn't disrespectful though. Funny. It was funny. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's unfair. Moving on. Definitely was. Huh? Buy a truck and start a business. It's this thing called variables, right? How can I answer that question when you got variables like how's your credit? Your credit will, will influence your down payment. They go number one. That's number one variable, right? So I can't answer that. That's why I say people need to get mentorship because super gay, I'm dead. <laughs> like, okay, people need to get mentorship because like, when you ask these questions, I need specifics. Like I would have, in mentorship, if you ask me that, I'd be like, okay, how's your credit? Okay, what do you have saved up? What's your background in truck? Do you have, have you been grossing a decent amount? Have you been leasing? How much experience do you got? Because a lot of places that sell trucks want to know these things. And starting a business, like now starting a business can be about 
it depends. If you go, let's just say if you go, if you get my course. If you get my course, my course for the business is $89.99 plus the men, the uh, what's name. So you at about, if you bundle them, that's 150 If you add an extra like $450, $500 and you do it all yourself, you'll be at about $650. But if you, no, not even $650, probably about $550. 500 600 bucks and that's to start the business on your own doing everything yourself just using my courses right and you that will pay for everything that will pay for pretty much everything that you need so to start the business i would say come to the table 600 650 dollars grab both courses and get started i swear to god get started so starting the business i can answer that now 650 now if you already knew everything that you need to do on your own or you already got the course, I would say you'll probably be out of about 500 bucks, give or take. Okay. I have my LLC established in Pennsylvania. I will be moving up to North Carolina soon. How do I go about moving into North Carolina? You will have to reach out to the state of North Carolina and ask them about changing the address and changing your LLC over, okay? You have to change your LLC over to North Carolina. It's always different. Transferring is always different. You don't necessarily have to transfer if you already got your business accounts and things of that nature. You don't have to transfer. What you can actually do is you can get you a virtual address. You can get your mail to your virtual address and get it forwarded from North Carolina to you. That way you ain't gotta be bothered. Possibly, you just gotta make sure you ain't stepping on nobody's toes. Disclaimer, disclaimer. You have to double check. Every state is different. These are that's just a general idea. I'm not literally standing behind and saying, "Well, you told me to do." No, I didn't. I told you this could possibly be an option. I'm just giving you more options to check into. The research is up to you. Super game. I'm there. How do you get your deal, your DLT number for your truck? You apply for it. You can go through OIDA, they will send you the paperwork, or it's different companies that you can Google that will help set your trucking business up. They will help you with logging, they will help you with IFTA, they will help you with all the things. They will actually even uh, monitor your logs. They will actually, like, they got some one-stop shop companies that will try to help you do everything you need to do. Everything you need to do. So, just letting you know that. Just one of those things. Preach. If I was to leave on with Landstar and run Southern Southwest Regional, you think I can eat running that lane? I'm from Florida. South West West Coast Southwest. So Southwest is like what? Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Arizona, Southern California. Yes, you can. That's not a bad lane. It's a lot of mountains. It's a lot of up and down hill, which means a lot more wear and tear on your truck. But yes, like it depends. Like when you're going into California, Southern California, if you do reefer and you're going down to the south, you do wheat reef. Okay, you do regional in those areas. I don't I don't see why you couldn't make money. I can see you making money. Uh, Southeastern. What about Southeastern? Making money Southeastern? Uh, making money Southeast. Okay, Southeast would be like, what would be considered Southeast? Florida, Atlanta. Uh, Florida, Atlanta. The area around Florida, Atlanta, yeah. You can definitely make money in the Southeast. Oh, okay. Florida, Atlanta, Alabama, North Carolina, South. Okay, you're right, you're right, I wouldn't think. Yo, my man, what's up? What we talking about? Tim 14, he actually, I actually did a setup for him. I set his business up for him. And I can honestly say, he has a beautiful website. He has a beautiful logo. He has his email address established. He has a dope switchboard. And he can put his phone number on it and you can call it. If he feels like adding his phone number where y'all can hear his switchboard and all that, I set that all up for him. And I don't know, hey Tim, I wanna know it's been a while. How you been doing on the business credit journey? Have you been applying for things? Uh, have you been getting any things? Thank you, sir, no problem. What I'm telling y'all is this, man. 
A lot of people want the free information. It's great. I have no problem giving away free information. But I'm telling you, go get the courses, people. Take advantage of them. They fly like hotcakes, and I'm going up on the price. I'm going up on the price, man. Because I want to do this. I want to do this professionally. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if I charge and if I'm able to make enough so I can be able to take care of stuff at home and be able to live off the money that I make. So with that being said, I will be able to help more people and do more. And I'm doing seminars now. Make sure y'all come check me out in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's going to be dope. Is it wise to buy a truck with payments or buying the cash about 10K to 15K? Yes! I am a fan of cash depending on your location. Uh, 10, 15K, if you're running something local, you know, you can get you some a little beater. And sometimes with like 15K, you can get some, but you still need money for inspection or some, all the things that you need to make sure that the truck is in good running condition. Also, you need to do a DOT to make sure when you sign signing on to a company, it's DOT compliant, it's ready to roll, ready to be signed on. And last but not least, uh, let me see. You need to have a couple dollars in there just for a quick repair here and there. Uh, it's nothing wrong with, I, I'm a fan of buying trucks. Like when I buy trucks, I cash them out. I don't like to pay notes. I don't like nothing sitting over my head. I like to cash them out. Because like if I got a truck sitting and there's nobody driving it and I'm trying to find the right driver for the right lane or whatever, I don't like to have to think about it. like, oh my God, I got to pay this note. I got I just let it sit and just, you know, man, it's sit. It. It's somewhere safe. It's not being touched. I'm good to go. Is it wise to buy a truck with payments or cash? I live in North New York City, about to move to Dallas in the next four months. Uh, Texas is a good lane for freight, great lane for freight. So I think you will do really well. With $15,000, you could buy a nice Volvo or something and get going. You could, you could do pretty well. Only reason I was asking about KJA. K -J -A. Hit my line, man. After this live, call me. I'm gonna set you up a nice mentorship package, bro. Cause I can help you through that ordeal to make that run real smooth. I can help you through that ordeal, man. Do not go through that alone. Call me, 855-YBE-TV49. Call me. I'm gonna mentor you, bro. I'm gonna mentor you, bro. Like, through that ordeal, we gonna come up with a crazy game plan, bro. I swear to God, we gonna come up with a dope game plan. And next time I go live, I want you to talk about it. Okay, I bought the bundle course. It's worth every penny. I swear to God, look, building now. Okay, I grabbed your bundle and it's very informative. Finna lock in with you on the mentorship from Real Deal. Perfect. Uh, 1014 is worth every penny. It, sh it should cost more. Y'all, look, I swear to God, look. This stuff be organic. It's 855. 923-8849-855. Somebody type this in. 855-923-8849. Somebody please type that in. Again, 855-923-8849. Please somebody type that in for me so I can pin it. Thanks for doing the videos. You inspire me. It's worth every penny. It should cost more. I grabbed the bundle. Said it finna lock in with you on a mentorship. 855-923-8849. I'm telling y'all, man. Listen, I'm telling you. Take advantage of this stuff, man. I'm not just doing this for sales, man. It is changing lives, people. Mentorship, man. You going through this. I got a speeding ticket for going over 16 over the speed limit is it over for me being a company driver no john doe this is what i want you to do i want you to fight that b f t b fight that b i want you to fight it and when you fight it number one if you're on this line okay where my keys at my keys at 
keys. Let me find my keys. Ah! Sorry, y'all. Had to reach. Sorry, had to reach. If you're on this live, I want you to see something. See that? It's called Legal Shield. Let me see if I got the pick. Yes, I have the big one. And as you see from the from the way the car looked, it's very old. It don't say the date that it was done. This cost me $15 a month. If I get a ticket anywhere, anywhere, if I get pulled over, I call them, hello, legal shield, what's up? Got a ticket. I'm not pleading guilty, fighting. Tooth and nail, what I need to do. Send me a ticket, send me $100, and send me your version of what what happened all right no problem write out a paragraph email that to them send the ticket with it and what's the name and that's it i'm done i don't think about it no more they go to court they fight it hey my client didn't do this this is what happened y'all can't prove it blah 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 this that and this a lot of the time they will dismiss that case when you got a lawyer, now, sometimes they will say something like, if you pay us $250, we'll drop it down to a, 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 a parking in front of fire hydrant complaint, a paid ticket, no points. Good to go. Keep it moving. Listen, what I, what I explain this is like this. Being a truck driver is like being a single man or woman that's highly sexual, okay? Because people want to F you. Okay, understand that. Now, if people are going to F you, do you want to use a condom or no? Just take your chances. Here is your condom. Legal Shield. TVC, Legal Shield. One of these places where you got lawyers on retainer because these DOT officers, sheriffs, Police, I just see police, you know, like, I'm black, so I automatically look for police. I don't even have to be doing nothing. I just want to make sure that they not doing nothing. You understand? So with that being said, being out here on this road, you are a high-class ticket. So they want to make money off of you. With that being said, you have to protect yourself and your license. The only way you do that, have you a lawyer or retainer, or you just pay for the lawyer when it happens. When it happens, you might pay six to eight hundred dollars to fight a small ticket. Hey, that's what it's gonna cost. Now, if you got the ticket before you got Legal Shield or TBC, they will give you 25% off of a lawyer, most likely, but it's still gonna be a high ticket. When I first signed up, I had a ticket that they was gonna fight, and I had to pay that lawyer like five, six hundred dollars. Just to show up. They fought the ticket. They got me off, but I paid a lot of money. After that, I'm like, uh-uh, I want a membership. And I got my membership and I maintain it. I just let them charge my credit card, the little 16 bucks every month, call it a day. Just something to have. So that's this meeting ticket. Ain't nobody really answering no questions. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, you know what I'm saying? Show some love. It gets me more out there. It helps out a lot more. You know, I definitely appreciate all y'all. If y'all not doing it, definitely pick up the course. Call me. After this, call me. I can set you up a package. 855-923-8849. If you don't remember that, call 1-855-YBETV49. This your boy Tucci signing off. Let me put my shades back on. It's not that sunny, but I think I look cool. I drive legal is driver legal any good yes 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 they just give you look they give you lawyers in your area they got lawyers that's on the plan all over the state so they just sit now you know what i'm saying one of their lawyers to fight the case for you go in there argue with the judge for you you don't another thing is about it is the convenience the convenience is though like number one they go up there you know what for my mentorship, I'm about to start a mentorship sheet that I'm gonna start with people 
and I'm gonna have everything, like all the small things that people need to sign up for and do. So I'm gonna make sure that they doing all the stuff, like getting driver's legal plan, I'm gonna make sure I do that for the mentorship. So y'all just gave me an idea. How is legal to you? Because I had another legal program and they didn't take care of me. They pretty cool, man. They will send you out. They will send out a lawyer. They will send out a lawyer, look. Okay, let's say you get a ticket. Let's say you stay in Texas, right? You stay in Texas and you driving through Pennsylvania and they give you a ticket. So you call Legal Shield, hello, yeah, uh, this is my membership number. I got a ticket in Pennsylvania. They gonna ask for the ticket. They gonna ask for your version of what happened and they gonna ask for like $100 down. And the lawyer from the firm or whatnot or the receptionist or the paralegal gonna reach out to you and say, all right, well, we got the court date, we got this, they gonna tell you what they see in the system. All right, well, it looks like you got Judge Pikachuinski. So Judge Pikachuinski, he's pretty cool, he likes me, um, he's a real cool guy, he's not real lean, he's not real hard on the traffic guys with what you got. I've seen them let people off with a slap on the wrist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna say you didn't do it, we're gonna see what he says, blah, blah, blah. They go in for the most part. Judge Pikachuinski is like, well, you know what? Uh, it's not really a big violation. And then they be like, well, what we could do is, so blah, blah, blah. They negotiate. Well, he be like, well, I can't let them off because this is second offense. Blah, blah, blah. This, this, this. Like, okay, well, Judge Pikachuinski, how about this? He's never had driving school before. Do you think that would be suffice because this could possibly help? Yes, he can do driver school online. All right, thank you. Driver school is $230. She calls you back. All right, you need to sign up for driver school. I'm going to email you the links. You get the links, you sign up for it, you do the little stupid driver school, the points go away. And that's the end of the game. You got somebody that can negotiate and you don't have to catch a flight from Texas, mix a day from work or two days from work to fly out to Pennsylvania for a stupid court day. And it all costs you a hundred bucks a lot of the way. Except, you know, if they negotiate something like that, you might have to pay for it. But hey, I will pay two hundred dollars any day before I take something with my license. Easy. No questions asked. Two hundred dollars be pleased. Thank you very much. So yeah, they pretty cool, man. They fight for me. And they give you good legal advice, man. Like anytime I'm trying to do something or I run into something legal, they will call you within four business hours and let you talk to somebody about your legal issue. So you always got somebody you can talk to. So I think it's pretty dope. And they, they give you any aspect. If you're going into real estate, you uh, want somebody to read over contracts. They do that stuff for free. They do that stuff for free. I think they, they use, they uh like you know the people who just passed the bar that's trying to get their numbers up so they could be a real life lawyer. They don't want to do all the scut work. Like in medical, they call it scut work. They do all the, the garbage work, the little easy stuff. So they, I think they possibly use them and they just use them at a firm and say, all right, well, you know, we get this much of a kickback from a driver's legal plan. They give us this much of a kickback to put them on the lease. So they get that residual income and stuff. That's how I think it works. If you don't beat it, will companies trip if they have 60? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Any speeding ticket, um, especially anything over 10, I think that they do take a good look at it. But by you only having one, you could possibly get away with it. Some companies will trip, some companies won't. You just gotta call and put yourself out there. You gotta call and put yourself out there. If you need me to help you, get the mentorship, and I will help you call companies, man. We call them together. We can listen, man, look, I'm on this road. You get a list of companies, we can Google them and call them together and I will show you how to finesse the situation. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Look, I gotta go, got calls to make, stuff to do. This your boy Tunchi signing off. Make sure y'all check me out. Give me a call, we can put together a package. You already know this your boy Tunchi. Signing off, ain't nobody, I, I answered all the questions. Okay, I answered all the questions and Legal Shield is pretty cheap too. $15, 16 dollars a month, so it's not too bad. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope y'all had fun. This your boy Tunchi signing off YBETV. If you don't want to end up in a box, think outside.